In the afternoon of November 29, 1970, a man and his two young daughters were hiking in the foothills of Ulrikens North Face in Bergen, Norway, specifically in an area called Istalen, or the Ice Valley. This area had gained the nickname, the Death Valley, due to its history of suicides in the Middle Ages and recent hiking accidents. While hiking, one of the daughters detected an unusual burning smell, and discovered the charred remains of a woman among some scree. Alarmed and afraid, they promptly returned to town to inform the authorities. Bergen police swiftly responded to the incident, initiating a comprehensive investigation. Upon examining the scene, authorities observed the woman's lifeless body lying on her back, with her hands clenched near her torso. Strangely, there was no evidence of a campfire nearby, but the front of her body and clothing had suffered severe burns, rendering her unrecognizable. Close to the body, an empty St. Halvard liqueur bottle with two plastic water bottles, along with various personal items were discovered. Burned papers were found scattered around, and underneath the body, a fur hat was recovered, revealing traces of petrol. Notably, the items had been intentionally stripped of their identifying marks and labels. Three days later, investigators located two suitcases at Bergen Railway Station, that belonged to the woman. One of the suitcases contained five 100 Deutsche Mark notes concealed in the lining. Among other items found were clothing, shoes, wigs, coins from Belgium, Britain, and Switzerland, maps, timetables, a pair of glasses with non-prescription lenses, cosmetics, and a notepad. Similar to the body, any possible identifying information had been removed. An autopsy determined that the woman's cause of death was a combination of phenobarbital-induced incapacitation and carbon monoxide poisoning. Soot in her lungs indicated she was still alive when the burning took place, and there was bruising on her neck, potentially from a fall or a blow. Analysis of her blood and stomach contents revealed the ingestion of approximately 50 to 70 sleeping pills, and an additional 12 sleeping pills were found near her body. During the autopsy, her teeth and jaw were removed due to the distinctive gold fillings, and tissue samples from her organs were taken for further examination. The police made a public appeal for any information through Norwegian media. The last confirmed sighting of her was on November 23, when she checked out of room 407 at Hotel Hordeheimen. According to hotel staff, she was described as attractive, around 5 feet 4 inches, with dark brown hair and small brown eyes. Staff noted her tendency to stay in her room and appear cautious. Upon checking out, she settled her bill with cash and requested a taxi. The police managed to decipher the contents of the notepad, which revealed dates and locations she had visited. This led them to determine that the woman had traveled extensively throughout Norway and Europe, using multiple forged passports and aliases. While personal details such as birthdates and occupations varied across the forms, she consistently claimed Belgian nationality, and the forms were filled out in either German or French. It was discovered that she had previously stayed at several hotels in Bergen, and had a habit of changing rooms after checking in. She often identified herself to hotel staff as a traveling saleswoman and antiquities dealer. Composite sketches based on witness descriptions and the analysis of her body were circulated internationally through Interpol. On February 5, 1971, she was laid to rest in a Catholic ritual as her check-in forms indicated her affinity for saints' names. Her grave was left unmarked, and 16 members of the Bergen police force attended the burial, ensuring her dignified farewell. For the purpose of preserving her remains and facilitating potential future identification, she was interred in a zinc coffin. The ceremony was documented through photographs, serving as a record, in case any relatives emerged at a later time. Despite extensive efforts to identify her, including facial reconstructions and an Interpol investigation, her true identity remains unknown. Over the years, Various theories have emerged to explain the Istal woman's identity, and the circumstances surrounding her death, including espionage, witness protection, 
suicide, murder, and involvement in drug trafficking. However, none of these theories have been definitively proven, and the case remains a mystery.